we're very honored that uh, Jagdeep Singh, who's worked very hard with us to bring Harinder Singh Ji over. Harinder Singh I met uh, a few years ago now, I think after he first did his trip to India some years ago, and we were at uh, college and there were some functions that he did at university college, or one of the ones he did at university college. And he serves as the co-founder co and chief programming officer of the Sikh Research Institute, which is based in Austin, San Antonio. San, San Antonio. Well, it's near there. Right? Near yeah. And it's a community development organization. Basically, it's a charitable organization like ours, but they work, they complement in a sense. So what they've done is taken it forward in a quite a different way in terms of raising the issues amongst the Sikh community of various age groups. And one of the ones that we've been able to partake of is the Soji program. We haven't developed it as much as we could do, and hopefully this will be the beginning of taking it further and developing it further here. Um, his work and activities span sort of several dimensions of looking at art, linguistics, theology, politics, a lot of those, and he's cons uh, consulted on some films such as 35, Ocean of Pearls, and The Widow Colony. And he's appeared on many radio and TV programs before. And we thought it was very important that we recognize um, sort of good works and Sikhi works and whether they be overseas or here. So we've welcomed him here and we really are very grateful that he was able to accept our invitation on behalf of Sri Guru Singh Sabha to try and give us some idea and hopefully what we're saying that we're recording this program so it is for benefit of many others and hopefully that you'll be able to tell your friends and colleagues and family of the next two uh, lectures, that, uh, the next three that we have over the next two days which is tomorrow evening and then Monday lunchtime and Monday evening. So from that, I'll ask Harinder Singh Ji to start. Thank you very much. Thank you. Why Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Why Guru Ji Ki Fateh, and uh, good evening. I think it's evening here now. I'm still shuttling between different time zones. Uh, thank you for being here, and thanks to the committee for uh, attempting to do some progressive things in Gurdwara. So we know of the complaints we have against Gurdwaras, but uh, I thought I'll also venture into doing things with Gurdwaras and see how they go. Uh, but the agenda today uh, essentially is, well, what the title says. Grest is a word which comes in Gurbani quite often, which loosely is translated as householder, but we'll get more into it a little later. And then everyone, whether you want to get married or not, but if you are of marrying age, all your parents will tell you how it's required to get married in Sikhi. Well, I won't make an absolute statement because Gurbani has maybe 1% absolute statements in it. So that's why I said, well, let's try to figure out what Guru's recommendation is. None of us have final answers on these things. So that'll be the approach today and the other series of things we are doing. We, if somebody tells you, I'll be the first one to admit that this is exactly what Sikhi is, I will say run away from them because they're lying. None of us know that, only Gurus know that. It's between you and the Guru but we can attempt uh, different dimensions to understand what Sikhi is all about. So today the dimension we're gonna get into it, how do we look at this culture of marriage, if I may call it, from uh, a bit from Gurmani's perspective, a bit historically, but quite a bit also how is it relevant to you and me. Uh, I know some of you are coming up right now. If you want to come up, it'll be easier, there's no microphone. You might not be able to hear me in 15 minutes because I'll run out of gas too. Uh, so if you just come up, there are a few uh, spots open here and we'll get into the program very soon. So the only two rules, I do have two rules about the workshop today. And the first thing I mentioned is, since none of us are experts, I'm not an expert, I'm merely a facilitator. Since none of us are experts, when I do ask questions, other things, and if you want to respond, if you choose to respond, Please don't say it as if we have the final answer, because none of us have the final answer. We are all in a different journey in our life. We can only explain or share where we are in our lives. So nobody is an expert here. Please respect other opinions. And second one is only one person can speak at one time, because we are in a three-dimensional world, and the sound travels particular distances. If all of us spoke at the same time, we won't be able to hear anyone. That's it. This is a workshop all the way in a Gurdwara, but this is a workshop, which basically means nothing is sacred and nothing is profane. 
we have to put on our thinking hats or turbans or chinnis, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and the idea is, when we are trying to learn, everything is fair game. So if somebody does ask something and you happen to be in a state of mind where you think it's absurd, please don't say it's absurd. Because what I learned in kindergarten was the only stupid question is the one you didn't ask. So that's the mindset I'm coming from. I hope I'm able to meet your expectations on this and committees here. But really, this is supposed to be not a one-way lecture, although part of it might become that. It's supposed to be more thinking, exercise, maybe some food for thought. And my sole agenda is, if I made you think, I will think that this uh, next hour and a half was worthwhile. So my agenda is to make you think. That's it. What you do with your thought is your prerogative, and go home and deal with it as you would with other things. Fair enough? OK. You guys look too serious to me. <laughs> That's why we ask committee if we can do this outside the Devon Hall. So we can have, not, be relaxed, you know, I'm not, as I said, it's, uh, it's going to be a little bit different than what you're perhaps used to. And uh, you don't need to worry about being wrong or right or being too serious. Life is fun. We need to, earlier I was speaking somewhere at a wedding and I told them, I said the only thing I've learned about Sikhi is it's a celebration. And mostly when I observe Sikhs, they're not celebrating. <laughs> So something is not right. Guru Amar Das Sahib is saying, Anand pe ameri mai, right? We sing this at the end of every divan. And he is so joyous, like if somebody is in love, since we're going to get into Grest part, they're, we say they're on cloud nine, which means they're excited. Then how come most religious people are not excited anymore? So sometimes I wonder if they're being religious or they're just being something else. So Sikhi, as I understand it, and it's a very incomplete understanding, it is really celebration. So we have to figure out how to celebrate life, and we look at grist in that context. Because there were various religious traditions, <coughs> including Eastern and Western ones, which somehow feel that if you get involved in worldly activities, even some Sikhs will tell you that, that somehow if you are involved in worldly activities, you are less spiritual. <laughs> Gurnanak's response was actually no. In, in, in his house, if you are involved in these things, you are equally spiritual. And it's a departure from existing world traditions, whether it was Eastern, Semitic, or uh, Aryan, or Hindu, or whatever else you want to call it. Where, if you look at even today, they really feel that if you get involved in family relationships, somehow it makes you less spiritual. And we believe, no, it's actually, we want to be in that coexistence where we are not divorced from the world. You know, divorces are never happy. So how can divorcing the world can be happy? So it's about figuring out how do you gel these two things together. You guys are looking <laughs> serious again. Maybe I need to tell a joke. I heard a joke last week. I swear I, I'm not repeating this. It's the first time I heard it. And it's a bit relevant here, so I'll tell it here. And I'll try to make it not sexist. So I'm going to use the word spouse. Yep. This guy, this kid actually, college kid, came up to me last week in New York. And he goes, uh, he was sharing some joke. I, uh, he says, you want to hear a joke? I said, sure. He says, Virji, what's the difference between finished and completed? Oh, man, that's interesting. And I'm a bit into linguistics, so I'm thinking, which angle is he coming from? I'm like, no, you tell me. He goes, well, if you marry a wrong spouse, you're finished. <laughs> if you marry a right spouse, you are complete. And if the wrong spouse sees you with the right potential spouse, you're completely finished. <laughs> So that's sort of the idea in Sikhi as well, and I'll show you how it can be that. So the, today's agenda is, I'll start out with some sort of a inspirational quote, as I understand from Gurbani and from <coughs> Sikh writers. We'll get into some questions. I'm going to have a few questions which I want you to think about. Uh, we don't have pens and papers, but maybe you can take 30 seconds to think <coughs> about those. Then I'll get into how to look at Sikhi at large before we get into grist. So I'm not going to tell you this is Sikhi, but I'll say here is a way to look at Sikhi among so many other uh, in the market pool of ideas. You know, people are presenting what Sikhi is, and I'll try to share an approach. Then we'll get into what is the big picture in Sikhi about getting married. That seems to be getting lost. You know, this discussion about what is the purpose of marriage, for example. We'll get into what kind of relationships are explored in Gurbani. Then we'll get into a little bit about the word grist itself, and since Lama are used to uh, get six married, we'll talk a little bit about Lama. I do want to talk about cultural dimensions. 
because there is this war also going on. Are we more Punjabi? Are we more Sikh? If I'm in England, for example, am I anglicized a bit? Well, let's get into it. I mean, those are the realities of life. So uh, how does culture, which culture, how much of what, you know, how to explore these things? And eventually, if you are into eHarmony.com, uh, you might be wondering about some of these compatibility indexes which uh, neo-psychiatrists are trying to come up with. Actually, they're worthwhile exercises too. Uh, and um, uh, perhaps we can get into that a bit and we'll wrap it up with that. Any questions on the agenda? For the next hour and a half? Can I get a volunteer who can read aloud? Any volunteer who had enough breakfast and lunch and tea or latte? Go ahead. In Guru Granth, love is not any philosophical abstraction. It is the incessant breathing of the Spirit of God and a life informed of universal sympathy. Love is an ever-flowing inebriation of the deep through a Guru-transmuted person. The transmuted disciple's act of loving man and woman is an act of grace. It relieves the heavily laden, imprisoned souls that by it are set free. It is wholly spiritual. Thank you. This is from Professor Puran Singh. Uh, anyone who has heard me speak before, I generally start every presentation with this quote because I feel this is one guy 100 years ago living in England and first published in England actually understood Sikhi in its spirit. So I highly encourage all of you to go pick up his books. He's written 15 books and you know that some of the titles are Spirit Born People, Spirit of the Sikh, uh, Bride of the Sky, Sisters of the Spinning Wheel. They are very unique titles as well. So this is what he's saying about in fact, I want to focus on this. Love, in, in Guru Granth Sahib, love is not any philosophical abstraction. There, this word is used a lot these days, right? I mean, you use the word, oh, in a single sentence like, I love my mom, I love my car. Is that the same thing? And then people will get into what really is love, you know, as if, you know, you can philosophize over lattes and two hours will be gone, right? This is saying in Sikhi, in Guru Granth Sahib, because Sikhi starts with Guru Granth Sahib for us, that's the original ideas we have now, in the absence of physical gurus, that's where we refer to. It's saying that love is not an abstraction. This is something we all need to understand, which means it, is, it has to go beyond declarations. It has to go beyond philosophization. And pretty much whether we are loving guru in a spiritual sense, mostly it's at an abstraction level, even in the relationships. We all say, for example, we'll say, I'll use a mom example because a lot of boys these days are mama's boys. <laughs> uh, you know, we'll say, I love you mom, but it depends, do you really? It depends on how much of what you do. Basically, I'm getting towards this word love is used very loosely these days. And even if I go into what M. Scott Peck is saying, you know, the guy who wrote Road Less Travel, he even says, love is not just a feeling. Most of us carry the feeling, right? He's saying love is not just a feeling, it is an act of will. To borrow Guru Gobind Singh's ideas, which is more powerful as sex for us, he says, Jin Prem Kiyo, Tinhi Prabhupayo, those who love will discover God. Kiyo is an active verb. It doesn't say Jin Prem Philo. We all feel it, right? Who doesn't feel it? We all, because we all have good hearts. Issue is how we deal with it at the mind level. So, the, so love, prem, preet, mohabbat, ishq, whatever you want to use it. If you watch enough Hollywood or Bollywood movies, uh, there will be a listing of these things. But the idea is kiyo. Kiyo, love is one of the few words in English vocabulary which is both a noun as well as a verb. Noun part we all understand. So I'm not going to dwell any time on it. That's the feeling part. We all develop them from middle school onwards, I think, <laughs> right? Infatuations and other things, and hopefully at some point love, with a capital L. That's why I've written with capital L. But the verb part, we seem to have forgotten. And I want to focus more on that today. It demands us to do things, uh, some change in behavior, some change in action, some change in giving, what we call, because it's, it's an active verb. It makes you do things. Or to borrow Guru Nanak Sahib's phraseology, he does not invite Sikhs to watch the game of love or to critique the game of love, which is what we seem to be doing. He only invites us to play the game of love. I want you to think about that seriously. 
because even in a religious sense, we seem to be, we have made Sikhi a spectator sport. We are watching people doing different things and we are critiquing them. Gurdanak Sahib says, Jyoto Prem Kelan. He doesn't say which Prem. In fact, you know, we say sometimes only spiritual, no. Gurbani is about everything in life. And he says, those who want to love, come on down. So he's not asking us to watch the game. Don't make it a spectator sport or critique the game. Let's play the game, the game of love. Yeah. So this is the idea I get out of the love is not a philosophical abstraction. And the other part I want to get into is the transmuted disciples act of loving men and women is an act of grace. If you feel you're not graced, perhaps the evaluation needs to be, am I loving? Because grace is Guru Prasad idea, is central in Sikhi. It says, we, you know, what we do generally is, if something is not working out for us, we'll say, in fact, Punjabi vocabulary says, oh, a guru doesn't want it yet. Jad guru pali karu, he can then, we still blame the guru. <laughs> or we'll say, I am not graced. Well, what about, I don't feel the grace. Because I don't know anywhere in Guru Granth Sahib where Guru is a discriminatory agent. We, that's called escapism, when we still blame someone else and we refuse to take responsibility for it, right? So, loving, one idea of loving man and woman is that the, that's where the grace is. <coughs> and it relieves the heavily laden, imprisoned souls. If you feel imprisoned, well, welcome to the club. It's nothing different. In Guru Nanak's time, people felt the same thing. It's a behavior issue. Sometimes people will say, well, you know, this is Kalju. I like to remind people, even if you believe in that era system, Guru Nanak came in Kalju too. So, in fact, Guru Nanak Sahib has written a very simple line where he says, Nanak dunya kaisi hoi, salik mitna rayo koi. He's like, what kind of world do I live in? There are no friends. Guru Nanak Sahib is writing about his times. Do you feel the same? Yeah. So it's a behavior issue. This is why the love word part I want more focus on, which is about what are you going to do about it, not the declaration only. Okay. So for us, the very act of love, whether it is mother serving the child, between the spouses, between the lovers, who are we to decide? It's actually a spiritual experience rather than a task. That's what I want to start with. So I want you guys to think about these three things. What does marriage mean to you? What kind of words come to your mind when somebody says marriage? Pictures, words, issues, whatever you want to call it. And if you are married, think about three things you were looking for in your spouse. So not today, before you got married. What were you looking for? And if you are not married, then what are the three things you are looking for? So I want all of you to do this exercise. Usually we do it with pen and paper because when you write, you crystallize your thoughts more. But do it mentally. What's marriage to you? If you are married, what were you looking for in your spouse? Top three things. I don't like long lists. That basically means you're looking for something that doesn't exist. Short lists. What, uh, if you're married, what were you looking for them from uh, when your spouse when, when you are looking? If you are not married, if you're single, what are you looking for in your spouse? Take at least 30 seconds to one minute and really think about it. Because, you know, it's like New Year's resolutions. If you write 11 of them, none of them got done. If you have three with deadlines, the probability is higher of getting them done. So what is marriage to you? That's the first question. To you. I did not say in Sikhi or what Gyaniji has told you or what your mom and dad are telling you. Have you thought about this? What is marriage to you? Okay, any volunteers? Otherwise this will become a one-way communication. Hanji. I saw a hand, yes. Commitment. Sorry? Commitment. <laughs> Strong word. Good. Anyone else? Hanji. Trust. Trust. Just keep these words in mind. They're loaded words. Hanji. Support. support. Commitment, trust, support. Progress. Progress. Mm. Sharing. Sharing. 
Okay. Yes? Letting go. Letting go. I'm sorry, I can't. Letting go. Letting go. Okay. That reminds me of something. You know, when, uh, when somebody was trying to set me up a while ago, and they would tell me, Harinder, marriage is about compromise. It's about 50-50. And I really used to think about that. At some point I said, that's such a horrible attitude. Letting go, I agree with. But you're already starting with 50%. How do you think it's going to end up? <laughs> it's about 100-100. You got to give all you got, right? This 50-50 business, I think it's coming out of those cookies in India, you know. Those, you know, they call them 50-50s. So if you're already committed halfway, how far are you going to go? Commitment, strength, so letting go. I like that. What else? Hanji. Union. Union. <laughs> what do you mean by that? That's a loaded word which is a bit abstract. So explain to me what you mean. Togetherness. Togetherness. What else did you say? Feeling as one. Feeling as one. Hmm. Now it's getting a little more abstract. Okay, we'll, we'll live with that for now. Hanji. Passion. Passion? Absolutely. You know, somebody used to say to me, that your honeymoon will die in six months. I said, that's such a horrible thing. You know, if it's going to, any, any requirement of any level of love is, romance must not die. Even if it's between you and your guru. If you don't feel the passion, you're already, if I reinterpret or interpret in this context, what Baba Pariji has written, he says, if you don't feel that separation, that longing, you're already dead. Absolutely. So, it's not honeymoon is over in six months. It needs to be, how do we have honeymoon all the time? Hanji. Friendship. Friendship. Man, you have introduced a word which I have a lot of trouble with. Any word with the word ship is a dangerous word. <laughs> Friendship, courtship, hardship, you come up with it. You know why it's dangerous? Because we really don't understand them. Think about a ship. It has stabilizer bars on both sides, otherwise it will drown. And all of us will drown who are sitting in it. So ship word is very, very important. And any word with the word ship, you really have to think about stabilization. Otherwise, any side which gets heavy, <laughs> you know what happens. You'll drown. Thank you for sharing that word. Anyone else? Um, I would say very good mutual faith in each other. Hanji. And feeling of intense sacrifice for each other. Intense sacrifice and faith. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? Happiness. Hanji. Companionship. Companionship. Other ship. <laughs> See how hard the word ships are? I, uh, yeah, absolutely. But you know, think about it. You know, if you... Um, well, I've said enough on the ship. We'll move. Hanji. Happiness. Happiness. And a loaded word, man. Everyone is asking what is happiness. In fact, now there are books being written from mathematical calculations, there are formulas of happiness. Economists produces, like, you know, it was talking about that how, I think it was in Bhutan, that there is a country has come up with happiness index. It's interesting because everyone is exploring how to be happy. You know, the old, uh, uh, I think it was Bobby McFerrin, Don't Worry, Be Happy song, like in 80s, I'm old. <laughs> you know, he used to talk about that and now people are seriously looking into it. How do we come up with what's happiness? Because it seems to be a moving target. We get happy with different things and different times in our lives. Good. That's about happiness as well. Anyone else? Okay. This is a good survey. Of yes, last one. Scheduling. Scheduling. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. That reminds me of my own life. You know, between my own, we travel a lot. My wife and I. She's a consultant with Accenture, and she's on the road, and I'm on the road, and. Pretty much our life, uh, since we have kids especially, it, if it's not on the outlook, it ain't happening. <laughs> because sometimes it's so busyness, you know, the transactions, lifestyle we are living in. We, we used to actually meet on the airports earlier. <laughs> because, you know, depending on where people are going, we have actually done everything possible which airline allows. We have even exchanged kids while at a layover airport. <laughs> now we can't do it because after two we have to buy their own ticket. So, scheduling. I'll, I'll, if you allow me, I'll interpret it and <coughs> present it a little bit differently. Making time for each other. You know, it's like what you used to do before you got married. Did you teach? You know, 
we stop making time. We don't have time after a while, and that creates a lot of problems. So that's what I'll take scheduling as being making time for your spouse. Just like we make time for everything else. Eight hours at work, two hours in gym, I need my racquetball, I need my movie, I need my soccer, well, there is a time with your spouse. That needs, if it's so busy, that needs to be on the schedule. Great, let's move, so just a summary. We have gone from happiness idea, friendship idea, trust, reverence, mutual respect, letting go, keep all this in mind. It's a serious business, man. You know, we spend roughly 13 years of our life so we are qualified to go to university. Then we might spend three to eight years, depending on what you're doing, to prepare ourselves for a profession, a career. Even then we might not succeed. So where in the heck are we gonna go learn about this serious stuff called marriage? And if we haven't spent enough time figuring it out, guess what's gonna happen? You know the statistics, I don't need to repeat them here. It's because we are not figuring them out. And if, we, if, if it involves things like ships, quote unquote, and trust. Yeah. For example, Nusrat has written this, and you tell me. He says, Tumhe dil lagi ko bhool jana padega. Mohabbat ki raho mein aakar to dekho. What's dil lagi? Infatuation. Mohabbat is love. He says, you will forget about infatuation if you are in love. There are two different things. And I feel you can apply this to Sikhi. Like most Sikhs have infatuation with the Guru. Right? When we feel like it. That's what we say in the relationship. I don't feel like doing this today. And sometimes then letting go. Where is letting go then? So he is saying, Tumhe dil lagi ko bhool ja You will have to forget about infatuation and apply this to every relationship you have. Not just in a sick guru, why guru sense, but also spouse, sibling, and fatherly sense, or motherly, parental sense. Mohabbat ki raho mein aakar to dekho. Have you even walked on the path of love? The earlier I'm relating to Guru Nanak Sam and those ideas. Ye ek aag ka darya hai aur doob kar jana hai. He says, love actually is uh, a, a river. The Riyah is a river, a fire, and you must drown in it. So love is something else. Ede bare parjiyanda ek hora, dar chaman haiye mohabbat, har kadam chu kar bala. He says, when you walk on the path of love, every step is like a karbala. Karbala is where the Prophet Muhammad's grandsons were killed, which means it's a very trying time. It's like Chote Sahib Zadas. So, I don't want philosophical answer on this one. That was the point I was trying to make. I want you to think about it for yourself. What is the relationship strong Anyone? Any responses? Hanji. When you commit a marriage, then you forget yourself, you have to do what is right for his family and for your Menona, a right, wrong word, I, I mean, you hear this so much these days. What is right and what's wrong? And perhaps we need to go beyond them. How about what's relevant? In Gurdanak Sam, I'm looking at it. The day he's getting married, there are people telling him, this is wrong. In fact, I don't, you should look at those Sakis. No, don't look at gurus as being just spiritual leaders or just political leaders. Look at them as relationship leaders also. He's getting, he got married. The world was telling him he's wrong. So I'm countering this idea of right and wrong. Because that's what we are trained these days. I'll come to you in one second. And what happens that day? In the day he's getting married, because he does not follow the systems of the world, they want to kill him that day. Imagine how much they hated him. But he didn't hate back. That's the difference. They, in fact, there's a Gurdwara called Gurdwara Kachikan in Batala, where they tried to throw the whole wall on him to kill him that day because he would not follow, even for his marriage, the way of the world. Hanji. Um, is it just being true to yourself? Like? There are no right or wrong answers. I just said there are no right or wrong answers. Possibly for you, because this is your answer. It's being true to yourself, perhaps for you. But I, you know, we don't take time out to think about this thing. In fact, there's exercise which a lot of uh, these self-development classes do, and I'll mention it. Do it yourself when you go home. When you go home tonight, stare at yourself for a minute in the, in the, in the mirror. Most of us are not able to do it. We start seeing our own ugliness, we run away. And the other exercise is, if you're sitting alone, and you can't sit 
and like your own company for a minute, you start calling or turn the TV on. But basically, a psychologist will tell you that means you don't like your own company. <laughs> because we are not learning to spend time. This is developing yourself. Hanji. Conflict. Conflict? That's very real. In fact, everything I have learned in Gurbani, and it's very little understanding, it's all about dealing with conflicts. It's not that you won't have conflicts. Look at Guru's lives. Their kids, the society, the state, everyone's giving them all sorts of things. But Gurbani helps us figure out how do you deal with it, how do you address it. I love that answer. Thank you. What else? So it's not that we don't want conflict. They are the reality of life is how you're going to deal with it. What about what's your relationship with your surroundings? Are they the each other yesterday? Hanji. It's, it's basically that. If you have developed one or the other lens, you have both. Hanji. I think these are, these are linked together. Yeah. The surroundings is the illusion, and yourself is real. It's, how, it's, the, it's the conflict thing. Everything else is an illusion. It's how, you, it's how you deal with it. There's a beautiful line in a Shabbat which says, Man pardesi jethiye sab des paraya. If your mind is foreign to you, the whole world is going to be foreign to you. Which basically means, if you don't know who you are, Tanupuri dunya nuhi samjani hao ki ho rea. So it come, you're absolutely right, both of you. But what do we end up doing? We love talking about this. In fact, we take the your out and we talk about others. This is where our focus is most of the day. Talking about others' relationships. But the focus needs to be, am I developing a lens to do both of these for myself? Because it's easy to talk about others. I have asked this question about my spouse, so maybe it will be a long discussion. You know, until what they say, until the... We would have kept talking until the pigs fly, right? Which, by the way, we already had swine flu, so they've already fallen. But anyway, the point is, we don't think enough about our own relationships. We expect that the other person will understand. But I don't understand what I am doing. Anyone else? Okay. You can say self-analyze. Relationship with us is to analyze ourselves. Try to. I'll just amend it a bit. Because remember in the first slide I said love is not an abstraction. Similarly, relationship is not just an analysis. Professor Puran Singh in one place has written, intellectual analysis is never right. Perception by the soul is never wrong. We don't develop perceptions. You know, Punjabi says, Nazariya, dekho, dekhan da nazariya develop karo. Or as Gurbani says, Netra ta sade kul sare ne, eyes. But what are you seeing from them? E netro mere ho, har bin avar da dekho koi. Am I able to see, if I still have what the European philosophers like Ernest Gellner called the other condition, if I still feel that somebody is the other, even my spouse, then you have not developed it yet. That's what Gurbani is saying. And if you are able to do this with your spouse, you know what they call synergy. One and one is not two or eleven. It actually depends on your explosive relationship. It could be anything. And this is when they say, Synergistic relationship is, you don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be very explosive. We call them power couples. Because you don't, I mean, if, you, if two, two explosive personalities are together, you don't know what their limit is. But if they're not explosive, they might be taking each other's fuse out. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just playing with the words here. Okay. Now let's come into Gurbani. So far, I've tried to look at from our perspectives what the world is doing. In Gurbani, all sorts of relationships are talked about. Friend, spouse, sibling, child. Yes, lovers. Don't shy away from that one. And mentor. I know we're in Gurdwara. But I'll show you in a minute, Guru Granth Sahib and Sikh tradition is the only faith tradition I know in the world which actually celebrates the worldly lovers. I know we don't teach that in the Gurdwaras because maybe we are afraid. Okay, Nana, you know, we love watching love stories, but Sade Karna So, I mean, I want to be real about these things. Otherwise, Fada Ki Ghar Gal Karanda. And I'll show you how it's celebrated in Sikhi. But it has to be love story, the capital L, even if it's at a worldly level. 
So these are the different relationships, right? Gurbani, Gurbani is talking about all of them. We're trying to figure out what Guru has to say about uh, spousal relationship as well. But I want you to observe something, and if you don't know Gurmukhi script, then bear with me. At least look at the underlying words. And this is very, very important. When it talks about relationship with the Guru, whatever that means to you, the word is meet. With Vaheguru, word is meet. With family, word is met. With people, word is Sakhi, which means friend as well. When it talks about relationship with your mind, your heart, yourself, Mitra and Mitra. Very interestingly, in Gurbani, the idea which comes over and over, it will talk about Ma Wali, Te Pyo Wali, Te Bache Wali relationship. When it comes to coming up with the highest level of relationship with anything in the world, it comes down to friend. And you know that already, don't you? We confide in our friends things we can't talk to our parents about. So fatherly figure is overly presented by our pracharaks. I want you to come with a friend figure with Gurbani. Let's go back. Guru then Alvi, you want to be friends. If you're not friends, if you just respect somebody, you might see it from a distance. We'll be at arm's length. You become friends with them, it's going to be a very different relationship. And this is what's happening in the community, isn't it? Guru is at the arm's length. Why Guru, same thing. I know he or she exists up there somewhere, but that's about it. It's very abstract. Well, it says, well, Har Prabh Sakha Meet Prabh Mera, very personal, Mera, mine. My Vaheguru is my friend. Same thing with family. Who really is my brother and sister? The one who is friends with me. So, you know, same thing with people. Who is going to be what we call like-minded individuals today? The Sakhi. Sakhis are the female friends. And Gurbani present in a feminine voice there. My point here basically is, are we nurturing a friend relationship or not? Every other relationship is good. But any relationship which goes to the level of friendship is very powerful, incredibly powerful. It's the, it's the one we call it's explosive relationship then. So the few things are, yes, other relationships matter, and they are great. But even if it's your dad, for example, if, if it's just a dad, or if it's your buddy, they're two very different things. And a few of us are able to do that. And you know it's very powerful then. It's not somebody you fear is my father. It's somebody you hang out with. Maybe it's cool or even better. Right? Same thing here. Anything which is below friendship, I'm not saying is not good. I'm saying it's not as powerful. So a day, apni life which, if you have a great friendship with somebody and it goes bad, you know how much pain it causes, right? But if it works, there's nothing like it. It doesn't matter whether you're related or not with them, right? So <coughs> relationship, any relationship which can be evolved, whether it's in family, whether it's in panthak work. Everyone talks about panth, panth, but really where is the relationship? There isn't. That's what they, nothing is getting done. It's just declaration, remember? The noun part of love, not the verb part. Extra religious, other people in the world. Well, why we look down upon other people who are not, whether they are sick or not? Because the love element is missing, really. That's what it is. Same thing with spouse. When you don't, if you don't respect somebody with, if you don't treat somebody with respect and dignity, you can never love them. That's missing. The spousal dignities are just not there in so many relationships. So my point is, the idea is, friend ke mein banna. Mitter ke mein banna. Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, you know, again, I'm invoking a lot of Gurbani and history here. When he is in the Machi Wade jungle, what Virji was saying earlier, when he's alone physically, what does he say? The famous shabal. Mitter pyare nu hal murita da kehna. Look at the invocation. And you know, there's a Sakhi is that somebody looks at him and says, there is a dervish there and he says, Guru Kalla hi Kalla, Guru Govind Parsha says, no, Guru Nal Alla hi Allah. The point is, there's a difference between lonely and alone. If you feel lonely, there are going to be problems. But alone is not a problem because there are so many other relationships which are operating. So the point is, Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, in the time when, and this is very important, it's not as important if you just say that he was alone. What happened in those days? In those days, he had heard that all four of his sons are gone. He doesn't know where his family is. 
there is not a single Sikh left with him. And you know what the Sakhi is? He is described sleeping work carefree in Machiwara. So Kondreya Ronate, right? Can you imagine this much has happened in your life and you can sleep? This is why the Sakhi exists. And what does he say, Guru Gobind Singh? He says, it's all good because my friend knows what I'm going through. And he's talking to Vaiguru, obviously. So the Mitta relationship is invoked over and over in Gurbani. And I'm coming to one conclusion here, for myself at least, and for your benefit if you choose to take it, even among spouse, that's where you want to be. You want to be buddies. You don't want to be just, oh, she's my wife. <laughs> you know, it, it carries a little bit of a different connotation. If it's just a wife or just a husband, it'll be very different than if they are really your partners in crime. Yeah, because you want to do certain criminal things, don't you? <laughs> so the idea is, it has a very different feeling. And that feeling cannot be analyzed, is what I was trying to say earlier. So analysis thoda kach chahida. If you want to be a lover, according to Gurbani, in fact, you will not have any analysis. You will have powerful feelings. Not my words, and I want to carefully mention that here. Six traditionally sing this in Asa Ki Var, and this is a complete couplet, complete slow, where it says, Guru Nanak Sahib is describing who's a lover. And he's describing every kind of a lover, not just a worldly or just a divine. And you know what he says? It's a very, one of the most powerful things for me because it helped me figure out what I need to do in my relationships. And he says, those of us who are measuring pluses and minuses, they're not lovers. Changa changa kar manda. Changa is pluses, the positives. Manda manda hoi, manda is negatives. <laughs> Guru Nanak Sahib is saying, that they are not lovers who are still operating in transactions. Aashak ehe na akhiye je likhe varta soi. If you operate in consequences, you're not a lover. Now look at every relationship we got. In fact, look at marriages. Uh, you, I don't need to remind you what happens in most matrimonial services or most marriages, right? We have reduced our, our relationships, even at home with our mothers and parents, to transactions. They're very transactional. If you do this, we in fact are raising kids like that now. If you do this for me, I'll do this for you. Think about this. Guru Nanak Sahib is saying, you are not a lover. He says, you cannot be labeled a lover, any level of lover, if you operate in pluses and minuses. That's a very, I mean, he's talking about lovers here. Asha Kaun, the Ishq Karda, the lover. People did it, obviously. He observed it. He did it himself. If Guru is perfection, I believe everything he has written is he's practiced. But Guru practices everything he or she does. How come we don't talk about Guru Nanak's relationship with his wife? Maybe we are too afraid how good it was. Then all the Panthic people have to be really good at home. <laughs> I want to learn about Guru Nanak from his relationships. In fact, I do a different work. I've been working very hard to come up with explaining Guru Nanak through his relationship. How did he deal with his sister? You know, he lived with his sister. In Punjabi culture, they think it's a bad thing. He lived with her for a long time. He actually did a job in Sultanpur Luthi. Obviously, we are talking about a very different culture of Guru Nanak. How did he deal with his sons who rebelled? Very different. Sure, he didn't leave certain things for him, but did he say, get lost? <laughs> Why are, how did he deal with the state? How did Mata Sulakhani ji or his father and, you know, you talk about it. We need to learn Guru's relationships. So we can get ideas, real ideas on how do I deal in my relationships. That's how they become our real role models, the only role models. Okay, so let's come to grist. <coughs> Literally, you've already learned that the word grist, graha means home, grist is homeliness. Because, like, I'll make it political also, because everything is political. Why is it? Then when a woman is going through menstrual cycle, they won't let her sit and do certain things. Among six, this is happening now. This is probably the issue why they don't allow their Varsav complex, the women to do kirtan. And our guru, the one who is married, where he categorically writes a full slok in Asaki Var saying, if you believe she is impure, because remember the other traditions believe that, then he, Guru Nanak Sahib writes this. He says, if you believe she is impure, then everything in this world is impure. And in fact, he concludes by saying, it is the doubts in your mind which are impure. Sabbo sutak param hai. 
dujhe lag gaya jaye the doubts in your mind are impurity which are causing you the other love dujha pa is other love priorities you have in life so many options because i would say there is no focus according to our goal our focus is growth growing together six ceremony is the only ceremony religious ceremony i know anand karaj ji nu assi kehnde ha and i just i joke about that too ki odan toada karaj ho janda anand tanu aap labna penda the ceremony is happening they're not giving anand you are to figure out your own bliss and the way to figure out is if you are goal oriented and the goal is growth every year you file taxes because there's accountability how about meeting every year to figure out how much we have grown economically politically spiritually your own two or two of you as a couple the smallest political sub unit is family you need to start measuring your growth apa badhaiyan dende ha na jab kuch changa ho jave you know word badhai comes from vada vada means growth well before you give vada hi let's think about it did you grow <laughs> or is it just a transactional anniversary let's buy her something so she'll be happy happiness i seen earlier that's our measure of happiness actually vadhai comes from vada vada is growth as a community when we celebrate gurpur we need to think about did we grow as a community when we celebrate anniversaries or vare gand in punjabi we need to think about the same thing how much did we grow because the goal in sikhi is growth every kind of a growth not just that we have gone from 3 series to 5 series that's one growth right the growth other growth will be what did did you and i really become explosive on some spiritual issue or some political issue or anything else you come up with your own criteria economic growth is important but that cannot be the only growth measurement that will be very skewed data any statistics guy will tell you that that's a very skewed data if you have only one data point you need multiple data points to come with a trend okay there was a hand up that's all i had okay i'll keep moving here are the four loves this is not going to be a full workshop on loves but i want you to focus on i picked out the first lines major idea because the repeating word is what har pehle di love aur dujdi love balram ji are the repeating words and this is in the middle this is uh, i'm trying to interpret this for a grasp idea the marriage idea obviously the lava are about the larger union somebody used the word union earlier the union in lava actually are about your marriage with the wahi guru so you know when they do that shabad vyah hua mere babula don't think it's referring to the physical wedding the second part is important gurmukhe har paya when you become guru oriented and you wed the divine Uh, if you go through marriage ceremonies, have you seen in the cultural sense when a guy brings a bride home and before they enter, what do they generally do? Tail chon dene, right? It's an old uh, Punjabi South Asian ceremony. Well, Guru Sahib deals with that too. He says that tail, if you want to do, it's fine. But the day I marry Wahi Guru, make sure you come and do the tail because that's the tail which matters most. Apna soyaj padhneya hai, deho sajna si sadiya, jo hove sahib si mail, utthe lekhya. उदन आके मिलकर पावो तेल सो द रियल सेलिब्रेशन इज यूनियन और मैरिज और कोर्टशिप विद वाहे गुरु बिकॉज वी यूज इट एज अ सेरेमनी लावा इन अर फिजिकल मैरिजेस दिस इज इंटरप्रिटेशन फॉर फिजिकल मैरिज फर्स्ट थिंग लाव इज सेइंग इज इट्स अ परवृत्ति कर्म दृढ़ाया कर्म इज अ टास्क योर एक्शंस परवृत्ति कर्म सम परिवर्तन आर यू रेडी फॉर अ चेंज the lava need to prepare you for the change which is coming the first lava is saying are you ready for the change you better be ready because you are used to thinking for yourself now you have to think for two and that's a very tough thing by the way because we are used to this is my way right <laughs> that's how i like it well the first lava is saying are you ready for the change and you know even in the corporate world to change a small thing it you have to prepare people they do so many things you know there is a uh, your manager will come talk to you then they might have a bigger meeting then they might do some trainings right because they know the culture when it changes it's hard for people so it should be okay if it's hard yeah it is supposed to be but prepare yourself so the reality of marriage is you have to prepare for change and the second according to gurbani is have you invited guru into your life because the only ceremony i know in the world a marriage ceremony Reli- major religions in the world six ceremony is you don't commit to each other i want you to really think about this 
there are no exchanges of vows according to sikh ceremony to each other the commitment is to the guru this is very serious now like you stand up you do matha day you do ardas you don't say to each other na tera karang <laughs> we do it to the guru so what that means is if you really are going through this ceremony and you haven't thought about it you are giving promise to the guru that we will grow together and if you don't believe in that guru what do we call people when they just promise otherwise emptiness right phokki ji gallan ne oh he doesn't mean it well this is where you know the traditional sikh weddings like if you go back earlier days there are only four ceremonies sikh have janam ceremony and manan ceremony the first and the end you don't get to pick <laughs> you just that's going to happen the middle two you get to pick amrit and anand and it used to be that style that's why that if you and it's okay if you want to go through these ceremonies but i'm just explaining the ideas behind them the second law is inviting us to bring guru in everyday life don't make guru to be a sunday thing guru to be a yearly thing basically that means are you developing a relationship with the guru also third law is man chao paya bairagiya what is chao anyone knows what chao is and don't tell me it's a chinese thing <laughs> what's chao hain ji utsha utsha it's like when you are like today's word might be creative excitement bande nu kehnda hun when somebody is loving that he is on cloud 9 or she is on cloud 9 that idea now this is saying that you're going to be on cloud 9 all the time mentally it's basically party all the time <laughs> so this is saying the growth you know this is criteria for measurement of your growth we all feel it but if something bad happens excuse me we will say oh man she did this again and this is saying the way you are growing you know you are growing is when your mind is always excited about your spouse always and bairag is one of those things it's hard to explain it's like you feel the separation but it's a good feeling it's like when gurbani when it says there is a shabad bhagat ji kehnde ne odo na kaga kare i used to read the translation the literal translation says o oh, crow fly away i'm like what the you know what does this mean <laughs> because we don't have the context and then i had to pick up more dictionaries and other things to figure out what is this crow business <laughs> it's beautiful in south asian tradition when you are waiting for your lover to come home and you tell the crow o oh, fly away and if the crow flies it means your lover is about to come now look at the shabad pagaj ji is saying odo na kaga kare he is saying crow tod to je uduga matlab main rab de bahut neede aa rahe hain you are waiting for your beloved so context of these things help so birha barag longing separation if my heart always feels this gurbani believes everyone's heart is clean that's why 95% of gurbani is about mind what does your mind feel what does your mind think this is why this is saying in the mind do you feel that you need to be with with your spouse so apply it to wahiguru and apply it to spouse are you excited about your spouse like you were excited when you used to meet her or him when you were not married hai na fark ek gal i mean it's you know jada i'm i'm keeping things real so please don't get upset at me if some of you are too traditionalist but oda ek apna maza hunda chupke milan da oh maza if it's still there and you've been married 10 years you're on to something that's creative excitement and in in a leadership if you want to pick up maxwell's leadership book he writes that the person who leadership is the highest kind and the person who leadership inspires creative excitement i look at that in banda singh bahadur's life he loved the guru incredibly he people were creatively ex- uh, excited to take on the largest dynasty india had ever seen creative excitement does great stuff you can't predict what it can do who would have predicted that five six with banda singh bahadur will end up in sarhan and topple the largest mughal dynasty south asia has ever seen creative excitement you there's no limit to creative excitement but the mind must feel that and the last part then gurbani says is this is the way you become harmonious sahaj this is how the balance comes you're ready for change you have invited guru into your life you have creative excitement excitement you'll know what to do this is harmony this is ekshorta this is sahaj 
Sahaj is where you habitually do things. You don't need to think about it anymore. It's effortlessness. It's an excellent. If, some, if you were feeling good one day and somebody comes up to you and asks you even the toughest thing, you'll do it because you feel so good. But if you're having a bad day, you'll be like, get lost. You know? So this is why it's really good to feel good. Inu Punjabi Barkat can there, goodwill we can there, and A Sikhai, Arya Sanu Lama Devich, from a grist angle. We can interpret Lama for other issues as well. Grist angle is this it's preparing you. I know most of us don't even know, so like each other on the sometimes, uh, uh, you know, we're just in a rush to get to the limo we have hired. So, but it's important to understand what the ceremony is, and maybe we'll think about it if we understand the ceremony. Now I want to talk about cultural dimension. I said to you, I do want to talk about this. You know, if you, you, you guys watch Hindi movies? Some of you? You watch Hollywood movies? There's a lot of romance there too. You, you watch movies? Yeah. How, what, how can you say you don't watch movies? Where do you live man? otherwise? Anyway, now, here is something I want to share. Uh, you know, somebody told, you know, I, I started watching a lot of movies now because I'm trying to compare cultural dimension and other things as well. Earlier I was very picky about what I want to watch. Somebody told me a few years back that I need to look at the, India has produced the greatest love story. I'm like, really, what's the movie? They're like, Dave Das. I'm like, I'm not so sure. He's like, no, no, you gotta you got watch it. I'm like, okay, because sometimes I write reviews on these things. I watched the movie and I was scratching my head afterwards. How is this a love story? This was a big budget movie and it was projected as being a love story. I'm like, if this is what the popular culture is, the guy and a girl don't end up together, so they're gonna show each other how much pain they're gonna cause. How is this a love story? That's how it was presented. So then I started thinking, okay, I need to understand some love stories of India. And I, you know, searched, went to libraries, because Google doesn't have much of this. To be honest, the greatest love story I found were all in Punjab. Punjabi and his I in India, they can't find a love story. Not a great one. So look at all these. Heer Ranja, I don't need to, I hope I don't need to explain. Sasi Punno Leila Majnu, Soni Mehwar. If you don't know these, go listen to Gurdas Maan, Harpajan Maan, Sherry Maan, whichever Maan you like. <laughs> there are so many Maans. Maan Maani ni on there. <laughs> the point is, I didn't know this. I'm not a Punjabi by birth or by, you know, I wasn't raised in Punjab. So I had to go pick up love stories of Punjab. And usually they mention five stories. There's one missing there. Mirza Which one's missing? Mirza Saheva. The old Punjabi speak. <laughs> And then I got, I'm like, Mirza Sahiba, why is that not there? And by the way, I'm taking all this from a war of Pai Gurdas. The number one recommendation outside of Guru Granth Sahib is Pai Gurdas and Sikh tradition. He wrote about six gurus, and he was in the company of four gurus. Incredible theologian, historian, linguist, you name it, and he did it. He has a war. War is like a ode. In one of the wars, one of the party, about 10 lines are dedicated to describing lovers of Punjab. Yeah, that's our tradition. And he describes these four. Then I'm like, why these four? So I picked up this book, went through the stories. It didn't make sense because what happened in Saiba Mirza's story? Even Safri brothers sing about it, if you remember them. I'm old school. In their case, even the worldly case of love, they messed up. They basically made it transactional. That's what we've been talking about. And you know what Pai Gurdas writes? If you look at Heer Ranja's story, even if you didn't like the way Gurdas Man made it, you can go read something else. But it, it helps to see some of these things. Yeah? Heer Ranja, Sasi Pundu, Laila Majnu, and Soni Mehwal. Pai Gurdas de dedicates four lines, one line each to all of them, uh, each one of them, each pair. And you know how he ends the war? He basically says, as they loved each other, a Sikh needs to love a guru like them. The example of love is the love stories of Punjab. Powerful love story. Not every love story, but he picked these four. Peer Marida Pirhadi. Uh, roughly translated means, love your guru as these guys loved each other. So we actually celebrate this. Upon the worldly love we karna nahi aare, thoi pata lagda. O bhi asi badi chedi, o phir Devdas mangu, ye jaag, ye kya hai, o gana ye bada hai, o nane, ye daag jo tumne mujh ko diya, they start showing each other off. So we are actually 
a tradition which celebrated if somebody was in love. Uh, if you ask me, the whole, and I know you've heard these things, the Sikhi is about love, but you better believe it, it's about love not as an abstraction. <coughs> it's those who do it. We celebrate them, our culture celebrates them. And however you want to look at it, in fact, you know, Professor Puran Singh has written one essay where he writes, uh, Ranja was a Sikh of the Guru before the Guru. What he's saying is, this is our spirit. Paame asi apni spouse nu pyaar karna, paame apne guru nu pyaar karna, paame rab nu karna, pura jor la ke karna. And if it's transactional at any point, even with guru, we have made it transactional. In fact, we love saying this to gurus and aradases. We'll say, if this happens, I will do an akhand part. I think this is called bribery. <laughs> Think about it. It's or in a more sophisticated uh, defense contract, it's called discount fee. <laughs> Where you hire an expert who gets you a contract, you give him a fee, right? It's a sophisticated word for bribery now. But that's what we are doing. So you're saying, okay, that's what we do for bribery. It's not even love. We, if this is how you'll remember, this is how we treat our spouses, this is how we treat our children, this is how we treat other committee members, this is how we treat extra religionists. We make it transactional. When no one does anything, then we get angry, then we start blackmailing. Do you have a lot of people? I have a lot of people who are not going to do it. That's how blackmailing starts. Because it's transactional. Okay, now let's come to a little bit of more Gurbani. In Gurbani, husband and wife have a lot of analogy. Because it is one of the celebrated relationships in Gurbani. But I want to give a forewarning here. Please don't take that literally. According to Gurbani, we are all wives or women. The feminine voice of Gurbani, Gurus chose to present themselves in a feminine voice. This should be an indication that you better bring feminine qualities within you if you want to learn how to talk. The reason I'm saying this is, everyone will tell you today that number one issue in relationship is what? Communication. And Gurbani says the biggest, the most stupid individual is the one who does not know how to talk. Not my words, we say the nickname every day. Jeko akhe bol vigar, ta likhiya sir gavara gavar. The most stupid person is the one who creates a ruckus based on how he or she talks. So Gurbani says, you better learn how to talk. And Gurbani is showing that the feminine voice is the way to learn. Which, what is a feminine voice? Which basically what we generally qualify as being masculine, feminine in a worldly sense. Guru Granth Sahib is saying there are ways to approach these things. Bani word is feminine. Guru Sahib says, Aao sakhi har mail kare ha. Literally it means, Oh my women companions come together, my friends. But aapa hai ta kende ni. Phir aapa hai lagda ki vade marda saadi patriarchy khatam hundi hai. The whole androcentric ideas come in, right? And that's what we have made sikhi to be. With the image of a good sikh is a man image. That's a wrong image. There is no androcentric image in Gurbani. In fact, Gurbani says, Vaheguru, you know, there are shabas where it's saying, and this is again an example of man and a woman, husband and wife. Gurbani says, you need to prepare yourself so well that God walks into your house and wants to sleep with you on your bed. Sage word is bed. What does that mean? There's an old philosophical question, what's better? Uh, that God needs to come to your house or you need to go to God's house? You figure it out, I'm not going to answer that. But Gurbani says, Tada inna jor ove pyaar vich. Ki jindu si pyaar kar rahe ho na, o apne aap puriya. That's the only thing which said. So it's ki apne aap puriya ho, tada pyaar si jor ho na chahi ra. There are two Bani's I'm going to recommend here. They're very short Bani's, so don't get scared. I like short and sweet stuff. They're less than a page. And both are by Guru Nanak Sahib. One is called Kuchaji of the bad behavior. Suchaji of a great behavior. So I've called them from ungraceful to noble. How do we go from being ungraceful to noble? 
I want if you if you can go read translations are horrible, but I know in the absence of good ones, use them as reference. But please read commentaries on them. They're talking about how do I go from a regular individual to a great individual, and the voice used there is have them again. It's still not saying kuchaji means the one who is still under development. It's not saying you're really bad. It's just saying you're immature yet. So Chaji is the one who has figured it out. And if you read two Bani's, they're beautiful. I do a whole workshop just on those two. There's a very small difference between the two. Rest of the stuff is nail same. So you have to go figure it out what their difference is. I'll move on. I want to talk a little bit about Barama. You probably read them on Sangrans. Some Gurdwaras do now and some don't. There are three of them in Guru Granth Sahib. But the best thing in Barama, which is literally means at 12 months, it's talking about relationships. And I have been listening to them for a while. I haven't found somebody doing prachar from that angle. It's actually talking about your relationship with yourself, your spouses, and your community, and why group. But we don't present it as the Udevich Gal Ariya, that how do you get rid of walls, mental walls? What Robert Frost used to write, you know, uh, mental fortifications are what we are building. And we say this now. We say, put your walls down, right? We build walls. Barama talks about how do you get rid of these walls. Then it talks about there is a gap between the lover and the beloved. And you know in your relationships that exists as well. And this gap is not physical. It's emotional, it's psychological. And Barama talks about how do you minimize this gap. It's not a physical journey. It's a growth journey of a other different kind. So it gives the idea of devotion. Sharda Jinosi Kadanaya. Yeah, divinity ideas. So it basically says the only way to minimize the gap is when you serve with devotion. Yeah, you guys used those words earlier. Commitment is to use that word. <laughs> Self-realization is that you have a jodh, why guru is within you. Gurbani says. Harmandar ehe sarir hai. This is the temple of God. Now, if we really felt that, what we put in this body, how we decorate it, will be very different. Remember, it's about feeling it. Intellectually, we might know, we hear it so many times, Hanji Rabka Devich Haga Ye Host. But Gurbani says, Harmandar ehe jagata. This world is the temple of God, which is your surrounding. But we just don't feel it. This is why analytically we might know. The day you start feeling in Sikhi, we call it Hazar Nazar. If I see there is divinity in my spouse, I'll be very different. If an important person walks in right now, the way you talk and behave will be different, right? So basically, I'm not seeing the important person within her and within him and within him. When you start seeing it, your behavior changes. It's feeling that presence. And Gurbani says, when you feel that presence, your behavior alters. And this is celebrated by Pai Veer Singh. I want to mention a literature, Sikh literature celebrates this. Can somebody read this in Gurmukhi for me? Anyone uh, fluent in Punjabi? Hanji. Uchi bolu, please. Prem guna da hor, atam prem jo, e jo lave ti dunga linda, is vijan da fat saman na melda, Atam Amar Sadeev, Atam Namare, Prem Jo Atam Sang, O B G Bunda. This Punjabi is a little bit of a joke. Because the politics of Punjabi is there is a Hindiization of Punjabi. So most of the Punjabi we speak and read these is, is uh, Hindiized or Sanskritized. This is a Punjabi 100 years ago. Pai Veer Singh, when he spoke or wrote, People in the villages loved it and they understood it. People in the cities understood it. Anpadavi te padaya lekha sare samaj desi. So his was a people's language. If you are concerned about what's happening to Sikhs in Punjab, the number one way to make people slave is take away their language. So we don't even know how to express. And we are struggling to express even our love. Okay, can somebody read this in English, please? Anyone? No volunteer? Hanji. Uh, love of the form is different from love of the essence. When this strikes, the arrows pierce deep. Its wounds no time can heal. The essence is eternal, it is constant, and so, too, the love of it. Thank you. 
both of you. So what it's saying is, Pai Veer Singh is writing this in Rani Rajkaur as the novel he wrote. And he's describing a love which is not just physical, love which is beyond transactions. And he's basically saying, I heard a Punjabi song uh, in uh, Hindi, and I forgot the name of the the CDs I bought a few years back. It was very interesting. I haven't seen a CD like it. We actually picked a few good Punjabi poems and somebody sang it. And it had Pai Veer Singh. That's how I found this one. There was another song in there which says, E phat kinne ki dunge ne, kise ne haath na paai. Ishim Kumar Batalvi was a romantic poet. And he wrote about it. He says, these wounds, the idea is similar. E phat is a wound. E phat kinne ki dunge ne, kise ne haath na paai. E haath laya bhi dukhde ne, e malam laya bhi dukhde ne. He says, if you have been, and Gurwani Chandi hai karna, ki jir Pagat Kabir ji da wada beautiful shabad hai, ki jir da e wala baan hai ga, teer, when this arrow hits you, the arrow of love, he says, nobody will know what you are going through. And word in Gurwani for that is bedan. Bedan is one of the rare words which has two feelings in it. Pain and excitement together. <laughs> so I love this word. I haven't seen this kind of vocabulary. So it's saying, yeah, it's hurting. But I'm feeling good. It's a bathe, an idea, a bathe and word. Uh, look it up. So uh, basically I'm saying is uh, the, the, the love celebration in Gurbani, which comes down to our relationship, is metaphysical, beyond the physical aspects. Okay. So I know the world is talking about all these things, compatibility indexes, so let me come quickly to it. I'm going to reduce them to these four things. Mostly, we are worried about intelligent, and now some of us look at emotional quotients. I want to add a couple of more, PQ and SQ, physical quotient and spiritual quotient. So in your conversations, when you're deciding, if you are looking into spouses, please add that to your conversation. Others are important, what you do, how much you make, what you drive, which brand you prefer, but add to it, where do you see yourself in five years in terms of your sikhi? How will you handle a conflict? Those are important conversations. Which kind of movie you like? That's a good conversation. Add to that, what kind of books you like? Is there a particular part of Guru Granth Sahib which you get more excited about? Those are the conversations which are needed as well. So I'm not saying other things are not important. I'm just saying they're incomplete. We need to have a fuller conversation. And in Sikhi, you might wonder which one matters most. Obviously in Sikhi, if the goal is growth together to become one, Spiritual quotient matters most. But that seems to be lost in most conversations. Haji. Opposites attract. Opposites attract. I don't want to get into cliches, <laughs> but that's fine. I can give a counter cliche for everything you have. <laughs> but the point is, actually, according to Gurbani, the similar kind attract. Outwardly, we might be opposite. But internally, if you have the same mechanism, turde ko turda mele, muhe ko muha. The, the wanderers, here it's in a positive sense, that people who are on the journey, they'll find the other people on the journey. The ones who are dead, they'll find dead people. Okay, so in your conversation, please get into a little bit of SQ. Spiritual, this actually is the core question for Sikhi. In fact, Guru Hargobind Parshadini Garla, somebody was asking, what does he say? Part of the conversation is that. He is actually redefining, and this is Sikhi by the way, you know, Guru Amar Das Padsha, physically speaking, was the oldest guru. And for oldest people, it's very hard to change their habits, right? That's why this is even more important. And physically speaking, worldly speaking, he was the richest guru. Where is his daughter married? I want you guys to think about this. Look at social stigma versus reality of the gurus. They're having a conversation, him and his wife, one day. I'm just, you know, explaining it in this way. And they talk, they say, you know, our daughter is of that age. What, you know, we should find someone for her. And Guru Amar Das Pasha says, what do you think uh, about that guy who is uh, sitting outside? Kunganiya vech rea, chole vech rea si. Blue collar job, we'll call it today, right? And uh, his wife says, yeah, I think he's a good guy. Somebody like him. He's like, why not him? He's like, why not him? They marry their daughter to somebody who is richest man, richest guru physically, worldly by speaking. And this is why they're not philosophers. They're beyond philosophy. They see, you know, this guy's value system is very good. So that's okay. We're gonna get our daughter married there. They ask their daughter, she agrees, they get married. 
that given the opportunity, there's another example. Somebody who is not born in quote unquote the right family, we might call it, given the opportunity, he became the head of Sikh nation. We call him Guru Ram Das Sahib now. You know, if you've been to India and some Gurdwaras of Kunganiana Prashad, then then it's to commemorate that. That we remember that our Guru did this. And Pai Jetha was incredibly explosive in his relationship, as I'm presenting, that he became the leader of the Sikh nation, the Guru. So, I basically, you have to figure out what matters most for you. From a Sikh perspective, perspective the spiritual quotient matters quite a bit. Okay? So, here is the reality today. <laughs> These are the discussions. Should we have inter-caste marriage? Should we have interracial marriage? Should we have interfaith marriage? I've been talking quite a bit. Let's hear some of you. This is where the rubber meets the road. Hanji, I what do you guys think? I very strongly feel, Anji. and what we in marriage day you here, I very strongly feel, sir, and I feel also upset. I cannot convince the people, Sikh people I'm talking about, there should be intercaste marriages among us the Sikhs, but with mental caliber people. Thank you for sharing, and he speaks with certain conviction. Give him a lot of benefit of the doubt, because he's dealing with the reality. We might sometimes speak in vacuum, but he's dealing with the social reality. Thank you. Anyone else? Just off, the top of, um, off that uh, question, well, answer, um, would you say that is kind of deemed as something transactional, that most people's perception is, and it's not directly what Sikhi is? Yeah, I mean, if you pick up a matrimonial, and I've done this, and I'll pick it up, it'll say, wanted, clean, shaven, jut, gursik. <laughs> And I'm reading there, I'm like, I mean, it's not just about one caste or the other. You can create a khatri or put a ramgadi or whatever you want there. But you read that and you're like, okay, <laughs> how do you respond? I mean, you know the realities. I want your responses to those realities. What do you think about these things? Because if you're not married, your time is coming. I want to speak, actually, I want to hear from more those who are not married. More. Yeah, so we go back to. That's why a lot of the conversation I was trying to focus on, it really needs to come down to what do you want. And I know it's tough. It's very tough in some circumstances. But remember, Gurbani which we aya, the Nusrat de Gane mein bade quote kar sakda, the Punjabi ish poetry, Painandalal lo bhi quote kar sakda. It's all about, if you are going to love, the cost is chamna lo haya ishq ne, gulla lo taaya ishq ne. And that's why not every story, love story of Punjab was written there. Only four. It is tough. Yeah, even people when they are married, you think, let me ask, do a survey here. By show of hand, how many of you know good marriages? Whatever good marriage means to you. I'm seeing maybe 30% of the hands. Thank you. Second question. Think about this and don't ask me for definitions, whatever that means to you. How many of you know great marriages? So maybe less than 10% of the people. Thank you. This is the reality. There are very few good marriages. 30% is what came here. And 10% are great. And there is a vast difference between good to great. Even the GE Capital Study is showing that. There are a lot of, you know, if, if you feel you can figure out a good marriage, yeah, you probably can. But great marriage is very tough. So not every marriage has love, that's what this means. So yeah, you can do the customary thing, you'll get a customary response. <laughs> and Gurbani says, I'm all about, let's take a directive from Gurbani. Gurbani says, burn away those customs which take you away from your beloved. Guru Nanak was very different. He says, Jalo aisi reet, jit mein pyara visra. He's, he's incredibly revolutionary. He ain't, he's not gonna go by what people are telling him. I know it's tough. I'm sure there was a huge ruckus in his house the day he did that. And you know there was because they tried to kill him even. So, pyar karna saryan de lai hai ni. This is why Guru Nanak Sahib is saying, let's figure out how to play this game, the game of love. It is tough, no question. 
but we only talk about those who did it. So many of us try it, but you know, earlier I said also, and I'll come back to these questions, that at some point you have to blaming everyone else around you. You become a passive, explosive person, a passion-filled, uh, explosive personality. The same people who tell you you can do it, if you go do it, a few years later they'll salute you. That's just how the world is. You can listen to the world, or Gurbani says, listen to your Guru. And Gurbani also says, Na pati jai tau kya ki jai. This is how one of the Shabbat ends. What can I do? People just don't understand it, so I'm just going to do what my Guru wants. Because people are going to keep talking. If not you, they'll pick on him. They'll get bored with you, they'll pick on you. We just got too much free time, man. <laughs> so you can try to please people, or try to work on your relationship, which makes you explosive. Okay, let's come to this. Any other responses on these? Because these are where the issues are in the community, among other issues. Jinnah ne vyaya karona, tusi ki soch deo. Inter-caste marriage karni chahi diya? Karni chahi diya? Kyo? Sikhi doesn't put boundaries. So, I'm, I mean, I'm sure there will be very few people who publicly will say ki nahi karni chahi diya. Right? Publicly, everyone will say karni chahi diya. But what's the reality? Huh? I know, but you see, the deal is, this is where I follow the Guru Nanak model. <laughs> and the Guru Nanak model is, in a different context, his dad gives him 20 pounds, today's parlance. He says, go do some business. He spends it feeding hungry people, not the people who already have enough to eat longer. That's what we do. He feeds hungry people, he comes home, his dad slaps him. He's like, it's okay, that's what his reality is. I'm doing what's clear to me. So Guru Nanak model is, even if your dad slaps you, it's okay. Just do if you are clear what needs to be done. And the reason I was asking those who are not married this question more, because other thought other come ho gaya. Jinnah ne karna, this is the litmus test in your life, whether you will practice it or not. It all sounds good in speeches. At marriage time, you get tested on this issue. I'm not saying that you have to be like, I must get married as intercaste. It needs to be, I will not discuss this issue. It's irrelevant. I'm going to find the best person who can grow me. I also have put the matrimony in the And I deal with young men mainly. And I sort of probe them why they like a profile, they like the person, sounds good. Ah, she's not. Right. So and so fast. And I will say, why, what, why, what does, does that really matter to you? I do. And they will say, no, it doesn't matter to me. But I don't matter to my father. Yeah. Because you have to cut your life. You have to cut your father. Sikh is all about. We are 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 all about. And we said, no matter how much we sit and talk to them. Totally right. Because we, have treating, we are treating love as a declaration, not as a practice key. That's why I say, it doesn't matter which level of love it is. We love declaring it. I love you, mom. Or I love you. you know, some of us need to hear it. So we keep saying, I love you every time I call. But if it's not in practice, the verb part is not there, then it's just a philosophical abstraction. That's where I started today. And in Sikhi, philosophical abstraction is nowhere. So, yeah, this is what I'm saying. The young people have a chance. So I think our parents really need to uh, be uh, spoken to. Uh, if you have time, <laughs> but you know, a lot of you might do investments. You know, ROI, what is ROI? Return on investment. You do invest where you think you might get a good return. Good luck. But you still, no, you still got to hang around. No, I'm not saying don't, but either you can keep talking, and I, I do believe in dialogue, don't misunderstand me. But I'm saying the litmus test for youngsters is when they go out and do it. Whoever in each community will be a different person. Whoever is looking, whoever your family, your tribe, your animal flock, that's what it is, right? Gurbani kehte hai, mani kehte hai, kartur pasu ki manas ja, that's what Gurbani says. That you say you're a human, but you act like an animal. Whoever your tribe looks down upon, you should start identifying yourself with that. Change the behavior. This is how things get done. So anyway, we have spent enough time in the past. Answer is very clear. What about interracial? 
doctrinally answer is clear. Litmus test is your marriage. <laughs> interracial. What do you guys think about interracial? Forget it. Forget it? <laughs> doctrinally, what do you think is the answer? Huh? Same, Same as before. Okay. The race is not an issue from Gurbani's angle. We love to say Manas ki jaat sab ek ya pehchan wo karje kala munda aage bural ho jata. Sahi hai na? Fir asi kehte kar to kar guri liya nisi. Right? We are very racist. That's what this means. We are incredibly racist and incredibly sexist in our behavior. Doesn't matter what you end up saying in the interfaith speech. That all sounds hunky dory, but it ain't. Interracial marriage doesn't. We say we are a universal religion. We love to tell the world that how Gurbani is about everyone. Well, it's not in our behavior then. Interracial marriage is a moot issue from Gurbani's angle. Let's come to the third one interfaith. What do you guys think about this? Angie? Same rules apply? You gotta speak up. I'm getting old. Uh, so they're all six? <laughs> Interpret it for me. Okay. No, but Anyone there, else? Isn't there a commandment which says that a woman, a Sikh woman, can, can only be married to a Sikh man? No. Commandment already sounds like you're coming out of the Old Testament. <laughs> well, I, I, I get you. No, the reason I'm saying it like this, because we, as a community, now act more like Semitic traditions. We have become the people of law all of a sudden. I don't know how, where this started. We talk more like as if I, we'll say I'm a Sikh, but our behavior is as if I'm a Christian or a Muslim or a Jew. Because they are very much about laws. Now every time we invoke a law, without even understanding any spirit behind it. So it's not you, I'm just saying as a community, this is said a lot. Hanji. So there are practical issues with inter interfaith marriage. Okay, what will the kid be? Hanji. Generally, we say people say that because we are exploring that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we say my friend is thinking like that. I, 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 <laughs> but uh, something to think about. I just want to hear your opinions. We'll get to the doctrine there and then here. Hanji. Uh, first, I don't speak well English. No problem. I am from Romania. Okay. In my country, because of communism, no Sikh, no religion, only Marxist ideology. Yeah. I have a question. Mm -hmm. All euro of uh, immigrants, Germany spent billions of uh, euro for integration of Turkish people, Kurdi people, Muslims, Pakistani, and nothing was happened. Nobody was integrated. Money lost millions, billions of euro. France the same, because no one want to marry outside his community. Muslim only with Muslim, Turkey with uh, take wife from Turkey, Pakistani go to Pakistan, mm -hmm. even the children of Pakistani families born in Germany or in France or Belgium, they don't marry with, with Pakistani who was born in, in Germany, in Europe. They go to Pakistan. So never can be integrated. New people come, 25 years need to learn new culture, new language. How is it possible to solve this problem of, uh, of uh, integration yeah. in Europe all? Uh, religion, all if each one married only his religion, yeah. well, and make ghetto. Some especially Somalian people, right. they have one area only Somalia. Nobody so, can go inside. Th thank this you is for ghetto. I mean, this opens up a new can of worms, and uh, we can maybe go there after a general Q and A. I yeah. want to I want to keep the focus on from a Sikh faith perspective, and we, this is a larger issue. Okay, thank you. So, just on the so on the interfaith issue, there's it's going to be something that. I kind of thought I was missing maybe. If you've got one partner who's non Sikh, when they do the mama, they become Sikh because they're making a petition to the Guru. So they're beseeching themselves to the Guru because that's what you explained 
half an hour ago. So you're, 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 you got it. So interfaith, you really have to think about. Because this, I don't know any religion which doctrinally allows it. And it makes sense. Because how can you commit to something if two of you believe something different? Now I know, I'm not talking about what you're going to do. You decide what you want to do. This is not my place to tell. You marry whoever you want to, man, woman, whoever you like, of any religion, culture, it's up to you. Doctrinally, if you don't believe in something, how are you going to submit and invite Guru in your life? And I don't even get to practice. There are practical issues, what you do with kids and all those things. But this is exactly it. In Sikhi, and, and social workers, other people will tell you similar ideas. That if, if, you, if you don't believe in something, in Sikh way, submission or commitment is to the Guru, then the idea is a bit nullified. Or it's disingenuous, if I may call it, doctrinally speaking. So Sikhi angle is, these two are moot issues. We need to work very hard to butcher that issue. Literally kill them. There should be no toleration for it, if you really are a Sikh. This one, we should encourage people to get to know what you believe in before they get married. It's still not our place to say you can't do it. You do whatever you want. That's the religion we believe in. But we should encourage people, get to know who you are, what do you believe in, before you commit to that system. Otherwise, it'll be an empty promise. Yes? Yeah, I take your point on that, but it's interesting that some we spoke earlier about friendship being a key component of a good one is concept of the man. Um, and, you know, obviously, I can see why you want someone from the same faith. If you want to go to a journey, it makes sense if you're both on the same journey. Then, but Guru Nanak spent a lot of his time with people, his friends, you know, Simon Nanak, who are not Sikh. Yeah. And they never converted. So, right. Can it not be possible to have a true friendship and go on a spiritual journey with someone who's not on the same place? I did not say it's not possible. Absolutely it's possible. Uh, I'm articulating, let's, let me give another example in the, within the example you gave. Guru Nanak Sahib did not marry everyone from other faith also. We are talking about marriage and here is a part. This becomes a critical issue. Let's say if people follow two different religions, religious value system even might be okay. But protocols are not. They're diametrically opposing sometimes. Then what will you do? So uh, it really is, you have to really think about what you are submitting to because protocols of the religion are opposed. Guru, Nala, Guru Arjan Sahib is great friends with Saimi Amir. They, in fact, can you imagine today if you invite a Muslim saint to lay the foundation stone of your Gurdwara, six will kill you. <laughs> but Guru Arjan did this. But doesn't mean he's marrying somebody from Islamic faith. Because the protocol are two faith. One faith says no tobacco, other says smoke. So this is where, you know, relationship you can have absolutely great relationship. Marriage is a little bit different. Because the protocols can actually be opposing. And it does happen in religions. Uh, there and then in the back. Hanji. Yes, I would like to add your know, three Sure. We are living in a Western society. Hanji. Another fact is it is interracial uh, marriages and interfaith marriages are a bit selfish. You know, we have to think who we are going to please, ourselves or the parents or the relatives. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing your points. Yeah. Hanji. Does that not imply that Guru Nanak came to create a new faith and that we are a separate faith? Oh, I mean, it's not an implication, it's an established fact. It's a different story whether we choose to implement it or not. But this is not a discussion about whether we are a sovereign faith. We can discuss that. But absolutely, the Sikhs are an independently revealed religion. There is a very different lifestyle. Your and my parents, forefathers, generations, seven to eight generations ago, chose to become Sikhs. Some of us are not choosing. That's why we are facing this issue. But if you go back, absolutely, it was an alternative lifestyle which was presented. And some people adopted it, some didn't. So absolutely, it's independently a uh, different lifestyle. It's an option among other options you have to choose from. It's a choice though. Most of us are products of accident. We have not made that choice. And because we haven't made this choice, we have forums like this to figure some of these things out. It's a choice. Guru Nanak gave choice to his sons also. Right? Sikhi is a choice. Following a lifestyle of a Sikhi is a choice. If somebody is not following it, we have no right to go tell them that you suck. If in fact one who is saying it, maybe he or she sucks more. We are not the Taliban or policemen of the world to tell people how to live, but this forum is learning about a sick lifestyle. 
that's the difference. So we're not gonna tell people what to do, but if people want to know what is this lifestyle, then there should be option to learn that. Last one and then we move on. Oh, one more one, okay. Uh, we just talked about interfaith and all the discussions that we had till this time mm -hmm. is that Guru Nanak is talking about developing a self whereby we are introspecting and beautifying our inner self. Now this process could be carried by anyone on this earth, mm -hmm. irrespective of whether he or she was born in a Hindu, Muslim or a Sikh family. True. So if these two personalities born in different regions, I would say they are they still belong to the same faith and they could <coughs> gel along well rather than two Sikhs who are Sikhs just because they are born in Sikh families. In fact, I made your point. I said we are facing this issue because we feel we are Sikhs because we are born in Sikh family. But the earlier point, the first part of your point, I will humbly submit, think about a little bit more. We are not talking about getting along. We are not talking about somebody's spiritual capacity. We are talking about growing on the same path. And if you are in Sikhi, the commitment is to grow on the same path. If you have two different paths, it gets complicated very, very quickly. So this is why a journey, it's not that the Muslim journey is less or more. Don't misunderstand me. But the journey is of people who are humsafar, the fellow travelers, right? And the protocols, that's why the only reason I'm presenting is if your protocols are different, you'll have more issues. Last question, I want to move on. So, you know, uh, excellent question. I want to take it head on. In the interest of time, let me see how to do this. But the first thing I want to say is, we have not even solved where doctrinally the ideas are clear. And if we venture into where doctrinally the idea is not clear, it creates more problem. So do recognize that. Where wherever we know we shouldn't do, we are already doing that too much. And you go there where it's an interpretation or a deduction, people might be ready to take their swords out. But even then, one thing is very clear in Sikhi, that even if you don't endorse a certain lifestyle, it's every Sikh's right to protect that lifestyle. That's what Guru Tegh Bahadur taught us. He did not believe in the, they needed help. Although he disagreed with that lifestyle, he says, I will protect your right to live the way you want to live. So that point should be clear to every Sikh. We don't have to endorse every lifestyle, but you better be ready to answer any question of anyone who's in distress Otherwise, we are, we are not six. That's our tradition. So I'll leave it at that for now, okay? Okay, so uh, basically what we have tried to do today is to ask more fundamental questions rather than trying to solve problems of Sikh society. I, want to, I wanted the focus on you. Don't worry about changing the world. Don't worry about changing your whole tribe even. Because, you know, it takes a while. A psychologist will tell you to change one small habit it takes three years of consistent work. And if you don't believe it, if you're married, just ask your spouse. They'll tell you he still doesn't lift the seat. <laughs> okay, that's what it is. It takes three years to change a small habit. It requires persistence, consistence to change yourself. That's the focus and the key. Figure out your change. Don't worry about the rest of the world. And you, if you do it out of love, in Sikhi, it's believed that you're going to become an explosive personality. I want to share one, because we have focused so much ideas on love today, and I have to quote the biggest lover Sikhs have seen. His, his name is Pai Nandala. If you read his writings, Persian writings, beautiful, beautiful love poetry. Uh, in fact, I used to read Rumi, and then I said, you know, I need to go learn Persian to really appreciate him. And when I learned Persian, Pai Nandala is out of this world. He's considered, in a spiritual sense, one of the biggest lovers of Guru Gobind Singh. So I end with this. He says, Majuz hadith se tu, harfeen So Sikh culture celebrates Pai Dandalal greatly. Which means we better believe what he's saying. 
and he says majuz hadith ishkatu hadith is oral tradition like in islam the right their janam sakhis are called hadith like the like, like their janam sakhis on gurdwara so oral tradition which eventually got written down he says majuz hadith ishkatu in your love what people are writing harfi na khwandim harfi is letters alphabet letters khwandim is likhna he says what people are writing about your love i don't care <laughs> because everyone's got their own opinion on it people you know you know you pick up a book on guru gobind singh people are writing all sorts of things today too so this is very important what he's writing he says majuz hadith se ishq tu in your love what the oral tradition is writing harfi na khwandim dar raah ishq e in hame to qurar me kuni but in the path of love i am ready to stay up all night to talk about it. so he's saying if you want to love let's have a conversation if you want to analyze love i'm not interested there's a departure from analysis of love because how can you go in front of a married woman young happily married woman and ask her to analyze what she's feeling about her newly formed husband she should slap the hell out of you <laughs> right it's pathetic it's like the old movie that dead poet society where there was a mathematical way to understand poetry and robin william gets up on his desk and he says tear away that page and throw it away there is no way there is no mathematical understanding of these things this is the biggest lover sikhi has seen is writing gurnanak sahab i already shared what he is writing it's when you know who you are you will know what others are and you will find the right kind of people to work through it's really about you don't blame your parents i know at some point you have to let go i mean we don't ask them when we are 23 which shirt i'm going to buy today start making your own decisions they'll get used to it too eventually gurunanak's father and mother did too but be clear be a rebel with a cause not without one thank you wahguru ji ka khalsa wahguru ji ki fateh